you. So within the next 45 minutes or less, I'm going to give you one of the secrets to fulfillment in life. Now, there are three conditions that are critical for answered prayers. Number one condition is, if you please project it, write it. It's so important that you must always have a checklist. This is based on experience. Having worked with God over 18 years and in spiritual warfare, I've come to the conclusion that more, this is just some. Number one, you must be in the purpose of God. Number one, it's very important. You must be in the purpose of God. You can't go outside the purpose of God. God is so definite and God is so specific. And for you to have that fulfillment and answered prayers, you must be in the purpose of God. That is doing or being part of his purpose on earth. So number one, you have to be in the purpose of God. In a broader sense, you must be doing the purpose of God or you must be part of his purpose on earth. Without that, some things they call blessings won't come to you. God provides for his purpose. So I'm coming, I'm going to... Then number two, your faith must be anchored or established in this experiential knowledge that God is faithful, absolutely. So, the faithfulness of God is the basis of my faith. His faithfulness to his word, faithfulness to what he says he will do, faithfulness to his promises are the basis and the foundation of my faith. So your faith cannot stand in your effort or what you have achieved, your academic credentials, what society accords you, but that you are serving a God that no matter what it takes, how difficult your situation, he is faithful to the vision he showed you, faithful to the prophecy upon you. Faithful to the revelation he gave you. He is faithful to bring it to pass. This is the basis of your faith. Your basis of your faith is not going to be because you are connected to somebody or you know somebody or because blah, 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 blah or somebody had laid hand on you but that God is faithful. And these are cut out experiential knowledge that I'm handing over to you and you need to bring yourself in line and in shape. Then number three is unconditional. You walk in love and obedience to his statutes. You love the Lord unconditionally. Then you obey his statutes. Do not appear before me empty handed. That talks about of. Give arms to the poor. That talks about if you do it, you lend to me. Pay tight that there be meat in the house. You do it. So these are statutes. When brothers are mourning, you mourn with them. When brothers are rejoicing, you rejoice with them. So in a nutshell, there is a prop and proper way to conduct yourself as far as the church is concerned and the household of God is concerned. And if you walk in love, then, and you obey his statutes, these ones, these three, is so important for God to respond to your request. It's so important. I wish you clap your hand. Now, I'm going to go into details to defend 
what I have said. Number one, your call did not begin with the conviction of sin. Write it. You, don't, you did not become born again when the Holy Spirit convicted you of sin. No. Your call began in eternity. So, the call to serve God, to walk with God, to be born again, to be a pastor, to be an usher, to be a Sunday school teacher, to support the gospel. Anything that is the purpose of God to advance the church on earth is the reason for your calling. And it began in eternity before time began. Write it. So, it is impossible to fail when you respond to the call. There is no failure. Now, I'm going to defend it. Leave at me. I'm going to defend it. Now, it is the will of God that you marry. But the use of that marriage is the purpose of God. So, the purpose of God is not his will. His will for you is that thou mayest prosper even as thy soul prospereth. Then it is his will that all grace abounds towards you. But the use of the will is his purpose. Write it. So there is a sharp dichotomy, sharp difference between the will of God and the purpose of God. So you can be doing the will of God but outside of the purpose of God. Outside the purpose of God. So it's very important you understand what I'm about to teach. I taught it when we're under the tent. And today, I'm going to go deeper into it because a lot are fasting, a lot of people are fasting, praying, calling upon God. But they are not seeing answer. But after tonight, the Lord respond to you. Yeah. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10, Bible says, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So you have to give diligence your calling to make you sure. Now, I began by saying some three conditions were necessary for answered prayer. Number one, the purpose of God. You must be joined to the purpose of God. You must be in the purpose of God. You must be part of the purpose of God on earth. Then number two, I said your faith must relentlessly be fixed anchored in the faithfulness of God. It should be the reason why you have faith to break through. Why you have faith you will not fail. That God is faithful. That God does not change his mind. That God does not repent. That God doesn't change with passage of time. Then number three, you walk in love. Love is the reason why you are going to endure. Love is the reason why you are going to give. Love is the reason why you will testify about Jesus. Love is the reason. Then also, you obey his statutes. These are the embodiment that you recognize him as God. And this is what moves him. It moves him. Anywhere and any time a man recognizes that he is God, he demonstrates himself. Now, let me take an instance. Bible said and, 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 and David. David saw. David saw. David saw Goliath and David responded accordingly and said, the same God 
that delivered the lion and the bear into my hand shall deliver this uncircumcised Philistine unto or into my hand. God responded because David recognized that it wasn't by his skill that the lion and bear were killed. And that his faith and confidence of the future and the things that will happen is for the fact that there is a God in Israel. And Bible said God responded. So anytime a man re recognizes God, God demonstrates or manifests his presence. God is everywhere. He is omnipresent. Omni, omni, omni goes, omni dominicus, omni, omni, omni. All the ominous. Hallelujah. But he chooses to manifest his presence, his power, his person to those who recognize him. That he is God. Ah, may God bring you to that point. May you beat your chest and tell somebody, this one shall also come to pass. And you will see God moving. Receive that grace. Receive that power. So Peter is giving us an embodiment of the totality of understanding. A mindset that must filter from your mind into your heart. And must settle for it once and for all. Nothing shifts and nothing weavers. It is something that must be made out of your personal effort. What is that? You have to make or give diligence. Diligence to the calling. Diligence, diligence, diligence. O Christoni and your self on Kwan is for your diligence. O your Christoni, Yamia Frau. And I said, it isn't your conviction. On that day when you walk forward and give your life to Jesus, that begins your calling. Your calling began in eternity. So I'm going to take you through it. So uh, you must have certain understanding about the faithfulness of God. So Peter is saying that you give diligence to make your calling an election sure. Anybody else could have been called. Anybody else could have been elected. So your election is not by default of your environment or aging pool. Or because your house or your residence is closer to my house. No. But it is a carefully carried out decision from eternity. Not only when we said you are receiving bundles of money from heaven. Receive that power. Yes, it's necessary. Then, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fail or fall. You will never fail or fall. Give me, give me the amplified version. Give me the amplified version. There are people who don't give diligence to the call of God. And I'm going to show you that God does not bless you because you're an accountant. You can count money and balance the books. You still be poor. Until you discover and respond, add diligence to your call. There is a reason why he called you to a particular ministry to pour water on the hand of the man of God. That is the purpose of your calling to that ministry. Do it faithfully. Don't desire to be in the pulpit. Just pour water on the hand of God Johnson. Do it faithfully. So go look for water, spring water, river water, fresh water, sea water, and go about it with a lot of innovativeness and creativity and see God move in your life. So important. So important. Yeah. Very, very important. John, 
that received the revelation about the end of the world. Placed his head in the bosom of Jesus. Did not do one miracle. Can you imagine that? The apostle, loved by Jesus, who placed the head in the bosom of Jesus, that Jesus could trust his biological mother too, didn't do one miracle. He added diligence and was specific what his assignment was to Jesus, and that was it. God will bless you. You will bluff them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should clap your hand. I say, God bless you. Receive that power. Listen, I'm introducing God to you in a different dimension. That is it. He received the end of time. And so Jesus came to him. He was part of the people that saw the revelation of Jesus. When Jesus resurrected and appeared where they were and all that. Thereafter, Jesus personally came to him in the island of Patmos and gave him the events of the world to come. And yet, it is not recorded that John caused the cripple to walk. God has a purpose for you. Don't look at Paul Johnson. How I'm moving in power gift to cast out devils, breaking curses. Ask God, what is my purpose to this man? What is my purpose to this marriage? Faithfully carry it out. You know, excuse my language. Eh, if I were not to be born again two decades ago, I would find no reason to be born again now. Because the messages I'm hearing, it's not God. It's flesh. Appealing to your pride and ego. Your intellectualism. It's specially carved to make you feel comfortable. But they don't teach you God. God, as I know it to be, is a serious matter. Because of these brethren, be all the more solicitous and eager to make sure to ratify to strengthen, to make steadfast your calling and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble or fail. Are you with me? Thus there will be richly and abundantly provided for you Entering into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, so to go into abundance, experience the grace of God, experience the power, is diligence to your calling. See at the man diligence with his work. He shall not stand before me, men, but before what? Great men. So diligence. Add diligence to your calling. Add diligence to your calling. Add diligence. The last time I saw the table on which we have been recording the protocol and everything, how the mat is so dirty and uh, uh, is a cake and old, and my heart pricked me. And I, people look at it, write their names, and then walk away unconcerned. The table on which the water, they are washing their bowl. That thing is breaking apart and nobody is concerned. That's not diligence. I 
as soon as you park your car, you need to be looking around. Thank God. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. I have come to the house of God. Hey, why is this not in place? What will it take? Two CD. Who buy it? Go get it. That's it. That's it. Diligence. Pastors, what can pass it? 15 CD, 17 CD. They are wearing designer shoes. You know, I like teaching practical messages. I like giving you a serious injection. Pew. Yeah. Yeah. Then he said, therefore, do not, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8, he said, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. So, adding diligence to the calling and all that. Don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. So, you must share the suffering of the shepherd. Apart from not being ashamed of testifying what Jesus has done for you. Now, I'm going to give the opportunity for testimony on Sundays. And people are going to give testimony. You see the things that God is doing for people. He said, Paul says that these are experienced preachers. that are walk in incredible power of God. Grace and no more so on. He said, oh, go to verse 8. Go to verse 8. He said, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Don't be ashamed to preach Christ. But for your dressing, nobody knows you're a Christian. You don't testify about Christ. You don't talk about Christ. No, you don't. It's so serious, you know. Then he said, No, of his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. You share in the suffering of your shepherd. Now, Why is it so? Now this is the effort you have to make. This is the human work. Human proponent. Human component of your calling. That you must fulfill. There is the part of God. That has been done already. That you can do anything about it. But for what God has done in eternity. To profit you. This human proponent, component, effort must be done accordingly. So let us see what God has done. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28. No, let us not go here. Mm -hmm. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Number one, did I talk about love? Then number two, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Did I talk about purpose? But he said, who are the called? A definite article has been introduced. Not who are called, but the called. The called. So not everybody is called. God has over 7.8. Million people on the planet earth. But those he called are the called. Those he called are the called. So his grace is able to do anything for them. Number 
number one, because they love God. The number two, they are the court. They are the court. So whatever undermines your call and puts a weight on you not to respond to the call has already destroyed you, your failure. The call is very important. So, so you realize that, uh, for instance, I have lawyers. Uh, 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 she's a lawyer. Fine. It's a medical doctor. Fine. It's an accountant. Fine. It's a registrar. Fine. It's a manager. Fine. Blah, 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 blah. That is good. Great. Put your hands together for them. But what is the purpose of God for making you a Christian? For making you a Christian. Yeah. It's a clearing agent, ship and forwarding, freight and forwarding, freight backwarding, sideboarding, and everything. But what is the purpose of God for making you a Christian? What is the purpose? It's so serious. What is the purpose? So let's see. So these are the people he responds to. Go back to verse 28. Verse 28. I'm going to dissect it. Then we go. And we know that all things work together for good. So eh, the accident is not going to work together for good for somebody who is not the God. But for you who is the God the setback will be used for your advantage. The delay will be used for your advantage. Why? Because you meet two of the conditions. You love God and you are the God. You are within his purpose. So now, it's that up to his purpose. Are you serving his purpose? Now, what he asks you to do for glowing like church? Are you doing it? Do you sweep? Are you an usher? Do you sing? That is your purpose. Yet, your singing has nothing to do with your being a manager. That is advancing the purpose of God on earth. So, he's going to bless your managerial work because you are doing this purpose. He's not going to bless you because you're a manager and a Christian. No, no, no. No, no, no. Your being a manager is your effort. That's salary. But to be blessed of God, his purpose. Should I stop here? His purpose. So you see, it's a real gem when his prisoner, his shepherd, calls you and said, an elder, do this. I've introduced you to God. That is what it means. It is not a post. It's a responsibility. It's a responsibility that comes with lofty honor. Yeah. Because the burden of God on my shoulders will fall on your shoulder. My burden is spiritual. Your burden is physical. Are you with me? Then he goes from there to, so you look at the purpose in the house of God. You look at it. What the purpose, the purpose, the purpose, the purpose. The, you know, I, 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 I'm so attentive of the purpose. Nothing else matters but God's interest. God's what? God's what? So verse 29 said, for whom he did for no. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So here, here. moreover, whom he did predestinate 
them he also called. So, and whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. So, there is an aspect of your call that was done in eternity without your involvement and without your consent. Are you with me? Are you with me? Go to verse 29 again of the Romans 8. He foreknew you, which means that he knew you before you came into existence. He knew you before time began. He knew you in eternity. And then he predestinated. So your destiny is being made. It's not subject to change. You can do all the courses to change your destiny. It's not going to work. God has a destiny for you. It's so fixed and nothing can uproot it. Receive that grace. I declare your prayers will be answered. You will see the manifestations of the prayers. Receive that power. Are you with me? No, so hello. So Three phases of your calling to become a Christian, to be a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ was accomplished in eternity without your consent. So you were subpoenaed to become a follower of Christ. It is not your decision. It's not your decision. If it's your decision, then you need your own faith. Then you can make yourself a Christian. You can also work to go to heaven. It's not your decision. Is that correct? So, what does the word give diligence to your call? Call means invitation. Say invitation. Or summons. Say summons. Now, I, I, I want a party. I want one. I'm doing a party, birthday party. Strictly by invitation. So, I have a list of invitees. If you are not on that list, you don't show up. So, God, the call of God means has invited you. You know, if the former president, Mahama invites you, it's a big invitation. President Kufu is a big invitation. Paul Johnson is a big invitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, as soon as these profile of personalities, you are sure of more than 10 variety of dishes and accessory drinks. You see the enjoyment? Yeah. So, you have to respond to the call. So, your responding to the call determines your entire destiny whilst you remain a Christian. So, your call is the basis for enjoying. You have to respond to the call and respond to it well. You have to embrace it. Hello. Mary was somewhere, 17 year old girl, and Gabriel went to her and said, Hail Mary, full of what? And what else? Because, and then, and he said, you shall give birth to a male child. Then Mary said something. How can this be since I know not a man? 
Then the angel said, the spirit of the Most High shall overshadow you. Simple. Then what was Mary's response? Let it be unto me according to your word. She did not go around looking for men to impregnate her. She trusted the faithfulness of God's word and he who has spoken and it came to pass. That is the invitation. And today, you can't talk about Jesus without Mary. You can't talk about salvation without Mary. The question is, have you responded to the call? No. Have you started responding to the call? No. Why? Your attitude towards the purposes of God is your response towards the call. Not for your personal needs, but God's purpose. Imagine Peter and the others want to preach and make merchandise of the anointing and have story buildings and uh, the exquisite cars. The revival would have died with them. They were focused on the purpose of God. The purpose. And you know what? I tell you a secret. The only reason why two will sit in the church but one will be exalted and the other abased is the fact that the one exalted held on to the purpose of God. Serve his purpose within the purpose of God. It's so important. It's so important. We don't need a constitution. We don't need policy. Your result is as a result of your response to the purpose. I was preaching last week Wednesday and this microphone was giving me problem and I said I needed people. They came forward. Some have started redeeming to buy a microphone for me to preach. Is that a sin? So I see that is their purpose. And you know what? For doing that thing, God can step favor for you. Oh yeah. He is a spirit. He does not conjure God back to appear in his pastor's office. So anybody willing to provide the physical resources to advance his cause, he steps favor for you. So the response to the call. So three things from this scripture. Number one is this. Hello. Are you angry with me? So before God convicts you to become a Christian, three things has happened in eternity. Without your consent. Without your involvement. Number one, he has foreknown us. You did not compel God to know you. Out of his own volition, he has chosen to know Paul Johnson, to know Elvis, to know Kanko, to know, to know. Out of his own volition, he has decided to know you. So he knew you in eternity. Before time began. Number one. Number two. Then he also chose us. After knowing us. He chose us. Then number three. Then he predestined us. So. My parents were just like a bus. You are not an extension of your mother. Stop thinking what happened to your mother will happen to you. What happened to your father will happen to you. You're completely different. That is why you have become a new creature. I see you prospering beyond the walls of your father. I see you elevated beyond the limits of your father's house. Receive that grace. I wish you jump and say it is done. Say my chains are broken. You know, you, you, it, it, it is a lot 
of work to exalt yourself into a particular mindset and after a fast to decline and recline into the flesh. You have to sustain it. It's so difficult to sustain. But God give you grace. May the Holy Ghost quicken you for you to know who you are. Become conscious of what you have received. That what you must have from what you pray to receive will be a reality. Bible said when you pray, believe that you receive. Then you shall later have. So, you have received, haven't you? So, it's time to have. Between receiving and having, it depends on you. So, if you recline and not walk in that consciousness and the expectation of having what you have received, receive it, you jumped. You were anointed. You have received the anointing. Put it to use. Put it to use. Bible said, what things soever man soweth, the same shall he receive of God. So, you want to receive that dollars, you sow dollars. You start sowing dollars. You go take CD, change it to dollars and sow dollars. Because you can't sow maize grain and rip orange. You program it. What are you doing? You are testing the faithfulness of God. Bible said test and see. The Lord is good. Are you testing the Lord? No. I'm almost done. So, God is not using a vessel. The world knows you as a manager, but God knows you as Kwame. Because he premeditated you before you became a flat of, a clot of blood. So, he knows exactly who you are. And he also knows that you make mistakes. This and this and this and this. Took everything into account and said, come. So all that has been accounted for, then he said, come, come. I hear thy word come forth, that calls me Lord to thee. For cleansing in the precious blood that flows on Calvary. I am Camilo, come unto thee. Wash me, cleanse me with the, the blood that flows on Calvary. Said I am, am Camilo, come come confronts you in the earth with the invitation. 
So the invitation is a confrontation. It isn't you are prepared or you are not prepared. It's a confrontation. He gives it to you. And this is what we call salvation. And said, so this is the invitation card. Follow me. And when you follow him, he takes you to the basin of blood and dip you inside and wash you because he fashioned you before that began. Nothing on earth through your birth has the power to hold you. His sovereign will has dealt you out. I declare over you whatever is a ridicule, whatever is a mockery, the Lord will answer you. Receive that grace, receive that power, shout and say yes. So, don't let your heart be troubled. So, when He gives you the calling, the calling He has given you, listen very carefully. This is the climax of all that I'm teaching. So important that you get it. When you respond to His call, to serve his purpose on earth. You have become an integral part of the entire universal plan of God. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. You are not. Huh? What is the English word? Listen very carefully to what I'm saying. Whatever God is doing in the earth. Where they are bringing wealth to mankind. Because you responded to the call. You are entitled to 50%. He can give more and still lack nothing. So you are an integral member of the entire universal plan of heaven. Whatever touches you are touching. But you see, you need to walk in the consciousness of the value and the premium that God has placed on you. I, I rebuke that spirit. Who told you you are little? Once you have responded to the call, So your business is God's business. Yeah. Your safety is his business. Everything is his business. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5. Then I'll end it here. We'll continue next week Tuesday. For even when we arrived in Macedonia. Look at Paul's testimony. When he responded to the call. He said, when we, re, when, when, when we arrived in Macedonia, our bodies had no ease or rest. Wave at me. 21 days, you were eating in the evening. You say you are tired. Then someone says, are you tired? It's, it's, it's like you have accomplished something. Ah, so you have to rest till next week before you start churching again. It means an opponent. Look at what Paul said. Paul said, when we arrived in Macedonia, our bodies had no ease or rest. But we were oppressed in every way and afflicted at every turning fight. Every turning. Fighting and contentions without dread and fears within us. Verses. But God who comforts so, so you see, he knows you do 21 days. Listen to me, your body is not as it used to be 10 years ago. Who told you? He's preparing this body for the resurrection. So he said, as your days, so shall your strength be. 
For I, the Lord, I will renew your strength. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. God comfort you with money. Comfort you with grace. Comfort you with giftings. Comfort you with open doors. Shout and say yes. Eradicate your being slam from out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a God who comforts. Oh, me, Kabaz. He's he's blessed just and God. A suckling mother. And encourages and refreshes and cheers the depressed and the sinking comforted and encouraged and refreshed and cheered us by the arrival of what titles there are people that brings you revival so what then is revival renewal of God's purpose sometimes you forget yourself that you have received a prophecy you need a crazy preacher like me to take you through all the troubles of fasting. You know, people are tired, oh. They wish we throw a party. <laughs> but when you begin to pack V8, Jim Wagon, you begin to tell me, Pastor, I must be in Italy. I want you to bear me up in prayer. From Italy, I'm getting to France. I have to finish some contract there and then I come. When that one begins, you leave me here or that you keep praying. Let's go. But you see, until you push your body beyond the line, you can't have the uncommon blessing. God will comfort you. Anything you lost, God comfort you and bring you titles. Shout and say, you are my titles. Now there are certain breakthroughs. When they come into your hand, they revive the faithfulness of God. You begin to see that God is a God. He's a God to lean on. Receive that grace. Receive that key. Receive that approval. Receive that blessing. Receive that favor. Receive it. Receive it. He's a God. Comforted us by bringing titles. May God bring you a comforter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bible says, and Isaac, Isaac went to meditate at the evening of that day. And he saw the caravan. And on top of the caravan was Rebecca. And when Rebecca came, Isaac took her and kissed her and was comforted because of the mother. Because the mother was fair. And they brought him a fair damsel. He kissed her and was comforted. The Lord comfort you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He comforted them by sending what? Titles. I declare anybody carry your solution. The Lord connect your destiny. Connect your blessing. Connect. Connect your business. Link you to that person. Receive that power. Somebody is carrying what? you need somebody is the answer to your prayer the lord connect you whatever is been standing between you and that person is removed the barrier is removed receive your titles receive your titles not titles are new yeah but god who comforts oh yeah 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 yeah. God will mysteriously comfort you. The things you lost, the pain you have to endure, the reproach you have to go through because of his namesake. And you did not take power into your hand, but you went down on your knees and prayed. God is about to comfort you. When we are fasting and crying out, avenge me, O oh God. You thought time has been lost. But I came to tell you, God is sending titles your way. Receive the comfort. You will no more be depressed. Receive it now. Comforted and encouraged us and refreshed. And cheered us by the arrival of what? Titles. Go to the next verse. 
The next verse. Yes. And not only by his coming, but also by his account of the comfort with which he was encouraged and refreshed and cheered us, cheered us to you while he told us of your yearning and affection, of how sorry you were for me and how eagerly you took my part so that I rejoice still more. There are people that rubbish you and is killing you. There are people you pay the price for, but they have ignored you. Can I tell you something? They are about to remember you. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. I said they're about to remember you. Receive that power. God is about to take you in a vision and show you things that you have. Things that has fallen into your hand. Receive that power by the power of the Spirit of God. So next week, I'm going to go into how to respond appropriately. There are people who thought they have responded, but they have not responded. So I'm going to show you how and what it means to respond to it. Praise God. What it means to respond to it. Are you with me? Everything I have said is summed up in three things. Number one, what I ask you to project. I said for your prayers to be answered, for you to come into that abundance. Number one, you must be in the purpose of God. And I said, it is great to be a manager. But that is the will of God. The purpose of God is, as a manager, what use is he to his course on earth? That is his purpose. The church. The things we do for church. And I cited an example. How a table was dirty and it was not covered. Then I said, number two, or you being part of his purpose on earth, then your faith must stand in his faithfulness. God is faithful. I'm telling you something. Can I tell you something? God is what? Faithful. I, I, see, I have seen the faithfulness of God. Even if it's one second to deadline, he comes to me. He comes to me. He comes to me. You know, sometimes you think he has delayed. But you see, you are inexperienced to handle the kind of marriage he wants to give you. That's why he delayed it. You are not emotionally developed to handle it. Because it's a lot. Someday we are going to discuss. My partner are very experienced. You see, the common mistakes you are doing as a young man. You think you are in love. It's a feeling. They call it infatuation. Infatuation. You are buying sophisticated phone free. You will soon see. <laughs> I think I know they feel anything for my wife. But it's my wife now. Hmm? It's not a feeling. Hmm? I can even in your ear and she no 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 happy into you. Then no one I can no go Praise God. Did you understand what I said? Yes, poor child. Clap for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you see it also. Uh, <laughs> then number two, God is faithful. He is faithful. Then number three, you walk in love. Yeah, it's difficult to walk in love. Hey, the temptation... When you decide that I'm going to walk in love, Nyaminti, the temptation, hey, hey, love. You walk in love and your obedience to his statutes. You pay tithe, 
You support the needy, you support the work of God, you support your shepherd. As a matter of fact, supporting your shepherd, it is not optional. It's a statutory requirement. Galatians says, put it there. I'm quoting New Testament for you to see. Galatians says, at war. Let him, King James, amplify, amplify as watered it small. For two, King James, King James stressed it. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacher in all good things. Verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. If you violate it, you don't get a shepherd's reward. There are certain prices the shepherd has paid. At, oh, I'm going into next week. I don't want it. There are certain prices the shepherd has paid that he just needs to jump statue. You don't need to go through the process. So the shepherd jump statue. You. you know, jump start. You bring the car and you take another battery to spark it. As a shepherd's reward, he jump start you because he has paid certain prices, certain afflictions. Pastor, how is that true? Bible said Jesus died in your stead. And Paul said, I bear the mark of Christ in my body. Timothy, I have approved of him. You can reject him. So you see, there are things that shepherds have suffered, paid the price for. They jump start you. Financial revival, and you take it and go. I'm telling you, they go before God and say, God, this is the reason why I suffered the affliction. When I could have perfected the gift, I endured the hardship so that this man could come, do business, and be a blessing to me. Please override his error. Show him grace, favor him. God said, you sure he will do it? Yes. And God gives it up. I've just shown you one of the secrets. So, this is it. So you are going to, you are going to pray briefly that Lord, help me. Help me to recognize and to identify your purpose. Say, uncover it. Your purpose. Exactly. For me, in Glory Light Church, so that I will fulfill my calling. Please clap your hands while you tell them pray. In the name of Jesus. Please come forward with your tithe. Come forward with your vow. Come forward. Come forward with your tithe. Then the coordinator takes over. You are blessed. I commend you for more. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. I take an offering. It's one of the statutories. The statutes of God. You walk in love and obedience.
the same rent the heavens manifest his presence that all may see and know that you are born of God in Jesus name Amen okay so you give and then the coordinator takes over the announcement I am coming Lord coming Lord to thee Wash me clean, see by the blood that flows. Oh, cover me. 